Hello, my name is Tom Mills, and in this keynote presentation, I'd like to demonstrate how Foundation Software is making use of two of the new features in Power Roller 2019, the C-Sharp Web API and the UI themes to improve our users' experience and to create new business opportunities. A little bit about myself, I am the Senior System Architect for Foundation Software. Uh, I've been working in Power Builder and pretty much, much most Windows development environments for uh, the past 20 years. Uh, started with Foundation in 1998. Uh, before then, I'd received a Master's in Computer Science from Case Western Reserve University. Uh, a bit about our company, uh, Foundation Software. Uh, we create job cost accounting, project management, and mobile applications uh, for the uh, construction industry. We also have a payroll service, which is like an ADP light specialized for construction. Um, we are an ISV. And we have about 5,000 uh, clients across the country, all 50 states, uh, at any given time. Probably 20 to 25,000 people are using our software. Um, been in business a long time, 35 years. Uh, shout out to Fred, he founded the company. Uh, and we actually, uh, we have both the on-premise and SaaS where we host it in a remote desktop. So uh, basically we are old and successful. A bit about our application. Uh, Foundation is the flagship product. It's uh, main system written at Power Builder. Uh, it's a traditional two-tier client-server module-based accounting system, so it grows horizontally over time. We just add modules. Um, code base right now is about 3 million lines of code, and uh, version control system registers 16,000 objects, of which about there's 2,000 data entry-related data windows. Uh, and on those 2,000, there's probably about 22,000 data entry fields. So lots of places to type. Systems based around the PFC and Cornerstone frameworks, frameworks um, from ages past. Uh, those have been actually very, very uh, served us very well, uh, and we deploy both on site and as a hosted app, like I mentioned earlier. Um, and the system has been in continuous development since 1997, so we've never rewritten and just moved the code base along, and it's it's matured and held out well for us. Uh, first thing I'd like to show you is um, the effect that the UI themes have had on our system. Um, it's pretty cool. Uh, this is just a, I'll show you a quick before and after. Uh, and this will just be pretty much the, the out of the box functionality. Uh, not a lot of code changes for anything you'll see here. Um, and you know, as we move forward, there will be some tweaking of stuff, but uh, by and large, uh, what you see here is pretty much what you're gonna get. Um, so let me switch over to our foundation application. Okay, let me run this. And connect to the database. So right off the bat, you can sort of see the uh, 3D bit raised bevel look on you know the buttons and the column headers. And uh, this is something we that's custom written. Cool things you can do with data windows, but uh, so it looks a little bit nicer. But as soon as you get back into the data entry screens, you're back to that uh, you know the 1990s 3D bezel look. Um, you know the heavy look with the the buttons and stuff. Uh, let's see here. And get some data up. And you can just sort of, just to give you an idea of what the screens look like, you know, and they just go and go and go, you know, distributions, uh, let's see here, cash receipts, uh, open up one of those for you. So, worksheets for Obamacare, ACA uh, equipment, I'll roll up a record into here, sort of. Let's see, let's see, uh, we already loaded that one. Let's see, print local taxes. Uh, some reports, uh, you know, criteria, um, job history detail. So, I mean, you, you get a gist of, you know, this is what the system currently looks like. So now let's go and uh, flip the switch and turn on theming. Uh, why don't we start with a uh, blue theme? Let's see what that looks like. So all we did was turn it on through the additional properties and on the theming page of the application object. And there we go already. You can see the, the newer look. Uh, menu's a little different, colored up in here. Uh, let's see if we go back into the data entry screens. Get a much, much nicer, flatter look. You can see the tab pages look a bit different. Um, you know, the buttons, the hovers, and the colors. Modify on post it, so you can see the colors are different. Flatted, the tab pages look a lot nicer. So, simpler look. Much cleaner. Let me look at a couple other ones. Print local taxes. 
So drop downs have a slight highlight of blue when you mouse over them. Uh, job history detail, you can see what checkboxes look like there. So much nicer, flatter look. Uh, very clean. Our UX people really like it. Uh, let's uh, try one more theme here. We'll try the uh, dark one. So let's go back into the uh, application properties, the theme tab page. Let's go with dark. So this will be a bit more dramatic. So right off the bat, still that flat look, much darker color palette. So again, we can go into here. Uh, we're gonna have to redo our icons up here because they're not showing up too well under the uh, under the dark uh, theme. But uh, let's see, modify, get some unposted. Let's get some data in there. Retrieve some nice flat look, uh, much simpler labels, caption headers. You can see the data, check boxes. We'll highlight on those buttons. So data is there. And try a ACA form. So nice square look there, nice and clean. Uh, so definitely a big improvement over uh, you know that the the old blocky look. Um, so really nice facelift. Uh, so we're really happy about that. Let's uh, jump back over to the slides. So th summary on that. Uh, as I said, it's pretty much just flip a switch, so it's really easy for us to do. Um, so big bang for your buck there. Uh, pretty much just minor coding adjustments. I mean, the vast majority of it's just handled for you rather nicely. Uh, and a uh, big thing for us is that, you know, since we are an ISV and we do have external clients that we have to satisfy, the, uh, the sales and marketing really like the uh, like the new look. Um, so, yep, UI themes really work well for us. Uh, next thing I want to talk about was the C Sharp Web API and what we're doing with that. Okay, one of the requests that we uh, often get from clients is to uh, provide an API for our business logic. Um, this has been challenging in the past. Uh, we tried to use the .NET assembly pro target uh, previously, but uh, that just was not a, uh, a, a production quality uh, tool. Uh, we just ran into too many issues with it. Uh, but we're f what we're finding is the, uh, the C-Sharp Web API is really proving to be a, a nice way to uh, start to get our logic out of, um, you know, the depths of our uh, our system and, and make it available to uh, to third parties and various integrations that uh, we frequently get phone calls about. So for our next demo, I'd like to uh, show you uh, pretty much the minimum effort it takes to uh, move from a ODBC connected uh, application to one that utilizes REST and HTTP calls um, and the C# -sharp Web API. Um, when I first set out to play with this, I was actually surprised at uh, how little we had to uh, change, at least on the Power Builder side of our application, uh, to get this to work. Uh, in part because of the frameworks we have in place. Um, uh, we just had a couple of places to snip in, um, or we'll have a couple pieces when you see the demo. Uh, but uh, really, it'll come down to like you know how centralized your your CRUD operations are. Um, and just disclaimer: this is just a, a prototype. So let's switch over to the demo. Now on the Power Builder side, to hook up the uh, C Sharp Web API actually required a pretty small number of changes. Uh, before we look at those though, let me uh, first show you the screen that we're actually going to uh, work with. It's our county's maintenance screen. So if I go into back into the program here, and there's counties, uh, pretty simple master detail kind of screen. Uh, Cuyahoga. Now, right now, we're retrieving from the database over an ODBC connection. Uh, so, distribution header information. I was playing right there, so let me put that back. Uh, so, now it should be back clean. So, you know, add, modify, retrieve, that kind of stuff works. Uh, so, let's close out of here. And let me go back over. And I'll add in a pibble that contains the interior stuff for the. Uh, for just the county. Um, so this is, like I said, it's a prototype. Uh, so basically we have three objects here. Um, there's this HTTP client. Uh, he's a uh, one of the new objects, but he's a general purpose uh, object, or she is. Uh, so he just wraps up the, um, the, the native HTTP client to make it a little easier to work with JSON. Uh, so the posts and the gets and handling the, uh, the, the uh, status codes in that. 
and whatnot. So pretty simple, straightforward, just posts and Git wrappers. Uh, now there's the web service. This is the new implementation for the CRUD operations for retrieving, adding, modifying. Um, so you can see here uh, in a full solution, the, obviously you wouldn't hard code this in every single web service where you, you'd have one of these per data entry model, whatever you want to phrase it. Um, but uh, he's essentially going to redirect all the CRUD operations though. So he'll handle the retrieves, uh, the modifies, the adds. Um, our system, we don't actually let users delete from the data entry screens. We have a soft delete. So uh, what they see is a delete is actually an update of a single flag to hide the record. Uh, so there's not actually a delete function in here. Uh, but you can look at it here. Uh, pretty much the, st the standard approach is that each function takes all the data windows that make up the, the entity. So in our case, it's the header and the, the set of union overrides um, along with the key information uh, needed to update the record. Uh, um, one of the nice things with the, uh, the C Sharp Web API is the, the JSON package logic where you can wrap all the stuff up and chain it all together in one package um, as opposed to making a bunch of round trip uh, network requests. Uh, you can just handle it all in one package. So create a package. Um, build up a URL for the retrieval, uh, go ahead and execute that URL to, you know, retrieve this company for a county uh, and data comes back into this package after this call. Uh, once we've got the package, we can pull the JSON strings out. That's the, all the data that represents the data for the header and that's the data for all the child rows. Uh, so that can be multiple rows in there. Uh, finally, then we just import them in to the corresponding data windows and set our update status back to not modified. Um, and then just return the, uh, you know, here's how many rows uh, were uh, affected. Uh, similar, just another one, here's a modify. Uh, so get create a JSON package. Now we're sending data to the server. Uh, so, you know, create the JSON package, uh, add a JSON object to it for the uh, header information, and then add it for, add another one for the override unions. Uh, get our uh, URL rest call for our rest call. Uh, then go ahead and just post the uh, the package to that URL. Uh, so in this case, you know, county modify uh, with the information in there. Um, then we'll check just the return code to see, you know, did it work or not and return appropriate information. Uh, that's pretty much it. And, and that'll be somewhat similar. And then the last part of this is in here, since we're using the PFC, what we found was that really there are only two places. Let me switch over to here. There are only two places that we needed to cut in. Um, so we declared an instance variable on this, you know, the tab page for the web service. And then in the PFC retrieve and update events, uh, wherever you're, if you hopefully have centralized logic, it makes it a lot easier. Um, where the framework would normally use the data windows dot retrieve method. Here we overrode the, the standard approach and instead of redirected to a retrieve of the, using the web service. Uh, so, you know, we just here's the data windows to retrieve and we're doing this from the perspective of the the master data window. So this call will get everything, all the children, everything will come back in one, you know, one shot. Um, and then we'll parse it out uh, in that that web service, as you saw, that you know, it imports it into each one individually. Uh, similarly, for the update side, all the updates are going to happen here. So, again, we override the ancestor event. Um, and then just uh, figure out if we want to do an add or modify and whichever it amounts to, uh, you know, then we just pass the data windows and say, hey, tell the web service to add these or, you know, apply the modifications. Um, so really, we just had to override two events from the PFC um, at the, uh, at the uh, master level object here. Um, and then for all the child ones, uh, sort of just fooling the system that we just, uh, since everything's happening at the parent level, we just overrode these things so they didn't do any logic because uh, of the parent that web servers are has already populated all these. Uh, so we're just returning the uh, the row counts for these on the retrieve and then for the updates, just returning one to say, hey, yeah, everything's fine. Uh, that's pretty much it. So you know, just a web service, uh, just a wrapper object and just cut in two events uh, on, on each of the data window controls to override the updates and the retrieves. And um, just to give you a demonstration of how it works, let me go ahead and run this. Let's see, I need to get, uh, this is a snap develop. 
This is the new uh, Visual Studio Alternative IDE. Uh, nice thing here is it lets you run as a web server. Uh, so let me go ahead and run this, and I'll actually run it as the debugger. And if I switch back over to our application and run it, and that's normal. And we go into here, back into counties, and now we're actually, see, we just popped into Snap Develop. Um, the debugger broke because you so you can see the call came through instead of going over ODBC we are now calling through a web service uh, so here's our retrieve uh, we won't get into any of the details here uh, but just basically it's going to round trip it back so if I let this continue and we come back over here you'll see hey there's our data uh, adds modifies work very similarly uh, multiple changes per rows add some delete some make some changes uh, supports master detail detail um, uh, some very complicated things. I know some of our screens get pretty deep in their in their nested uh, uh, calls, um, nested structure. So uh, it's nice to see that it supports that. Uh, let me, so in summary for the C Sharp Web API, um, pretty much the big thing for us is that it's going to uh, give us the infrastructure to start moving our business logic into a, an actual full API, uh, at, you know, at a, at a business layer. Um, and then we can, you know, provide those to our web development teams and third-party integrations and QA regression testing suites. So there, there's a, a lot of a lot of benefits there for just having that one code base that everybody's, you know, can access. Um, allows us to keep a single code base. Um, also, the nice thing is it allows us to keep programming in that data window away. Um, so it's, it's we get to reuse those skills and. Uh, most importantly for us is that we have, like I said, we have a lot of complicated master detail relationships. Um, you know, it's and finding things that will actually support that are, uh, you know, it can be pr pretty trying. So yeah, it was nice to see that, the, the, you know, this was designed for that, um, particularly with the pa JSON packaging, reducing the network loads um, worked out really nice. Um, so it looks very promising for us. Um, so thank you.